recent history is notoriously difficult to write because of the mass of material and the problem of distinguishing the significant from the insignificant among events that have virtually the power of contemporary experience. In respect to the recent history of technology, however, one fact stands out clearly, despite the immense achievements of technology by 1900s. The following decades witnessed more advance over a wide range of activities than the whole of previously recorded history. The airplane, the rocket and interplanetary probes, electronics, atomic power, antibiotics, insecticides, and a host of new materials have all been invented and developed to create an unparalleled social situation, full of possibilities and dangers, which would have been virtually unimaginable before the present century. In venturing to interpret the events of the 20th century, it will be convenient to separate the years before 1945 from those that followed. 1900 to 1945 were dominated by the two world wars, while those since 1945 were preoccupied by the need to avoid another major war. The dividing point is one of outstanding social and technological significance, the steam locomotive. First was the evolution of the railroad, the combination of the steam locomotive and a permanent travel way of metal rails. Experiments in this conjunction in the first quarter of the 19th century culminated in the Stockton and Darlington Railway, opened in 1825. And a further five years of experience with steam locomotives led to the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, which, when it opened in 1830, which constituted the first fully timetabled railway service with scheduled freight and passenger traffic relying entirely on the steam locomotive for traction. This railway was designed by George Stevenson, and the locomotives were the work of Stevenson and his son Robert, the first locomotive being the famous Rocket, which won a competition held by the proprietors of the railway at Rainhill, outside Liverpool, in 1829. The opening of the Liverpool and Manchester line may fairly be regarded as the inauguration of the railway era, which continued until World War I. During this time railways were built across all the countries and continents of the world, opening up vast areas to the markets of industrial society. Locomotives increased rapidly in size and power, but the essential principles remained the same as those established by the Stevensons in the early 1830s. A horizontal cylinders mounted beneath a multi-tubular boiler with a firebox at the rear and a tender carrying supplies of water and fuel. This was the form developed from the rocket, which had diagonal cylinders, being itself a stage in the transition from the vertical cylinders, often encased by the boiler, which had been typical of the earliest locomotives. Except Trevithick's Penadaran engine, which had a horizontal cylinder. Richard Trevithick was born in 1771 in Illigan, Cornwall. He was tall and athletic, interested more in sports than learning at school. He grew to a height of 6 feet 2 inches, and was commonly called the Cornish Giant. A man of prodigious strength, Trevithick was one of the best wrestlers in Cornwall. Richard worked with his father in Wheel Treasury Mine, but it became obvious that the younger Trevithick had an aptitude for engineering. He was appointed engineer for the Ding Dong Mine in Penzance. There he created a high-pressure engine for raising the ore from the mine. Trevithick was fascinated by the possibilities of steam engines. He experimented with a model locomotive, and in 1796 produced a working engine, boiler combination. Encouraged by his success, Trevithick produced a larger steam road locomotive, the Puffing Devil. On Christmas Eve, 1801, his new locomotive took him and some friends on a short journey. Although the results were positive, Puffing Devil could not hold steam for long, which made its use impractical. Trevithick showed his designs to several leading scientists, including James Watt. Watt argued that his use of steam at high pressure was dangerous. Trevithick later accused Watt of using his influence to get parliamentary to ban his experiments. Trevithick was backed by a succession of sponsors, but his early designs either broke down or proved too heavy. And in 1804 he created the first steam locomotive to successfully run on rails, the Penadaran, which made three journeys between the Penadaran ironworks near Merthyr Tydfil and the Merthyr Cardiff Canal. However, the seven-ton locomotive was so heavy that it broke the rails on every trip, and the project was abandoned. 
The next attempt was the fancifully named Catch Me Who Can, which in the summer of 1808 ran on a circular track in Euston Square, London. The engine took on passengers at one shilling each and reached speeds of 12 miles per hour. But, it too, proved too heavy for its rails. Discouraged by lack of financial backing, Trevithick returned to Cornwall. There he developed a new version of the Cornish engine, which was used worldwide in stationary mining applications. Later, he worked as a mining engineer in Peru, where he made enough money to buy his own silver mine. When civil war erupted, Trevithick was forced to flee the country without his fortune. For the next several years Richard Trevithick lurched from one financial failure to the next, until he finally died on April 22, 1833, in Dartford. He was so destitute at the time of his death that it took a collection by local workmen to prevent this tireless inventor from hasty burial in a pauper's grave. Trevithick's use of steam under high pressure was essential to the development of effective railway engines. He, can be rightly credited with being the father of steam locomotion.